take a second to show you guys we are cooking while on the move <laughs> I can't stop every single time uh, we're gonna do something or we're never gonna get uh, well where are we going <laughs> we got to stay ahead of winter that's the only thing really that's the only pressing matter so yeah we and plus it's a wide spot in the river and there's no one out here so I'm just doing two things at once We're gonna make a little gas stop here in LaGrange, Missouri. Probably have to beach it, but the, the Casey's gas station just right there. Convenient. We're just gliding in. <clears throat> Tie up to one of these pieces of driftwood. Shush. One of the most iconic things that came from Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn, in my opinion, are the short floodwater pants, or whatever you would call them. I've never actually read the books. I want to. But it just makes so much sense, because you're always coming up these little two feet, you know, and like, and whatever I'm wearing right now, I'm wearing my pajamas, because I got everything else wet getting off that sandbar, and I just roll everything up, and I can just walk to and from the boat, like to get my spoiled brat beagle. Right? Come on, let's go. Casey's. Might treat myself to a piece of pizza. Gas is getting cheaper. Every town has some things to see. LaGrange, Missouri. We only got a few minutes. Gotta get back on the water and figure out where we're gonna stay tonight. It's getting dark so early, but we can take a few minutes and look around. Looks like a little monument over here. Let's see what this is about. The plaque says, dedicated to the LaGrange, city of LaGrange, by Helen Green Call Callow, 1997. Restoration of the bell donated by the Grange Foundry. The Grange, Missouri, founded in 1832 in Marin County. After Lewis County was formed, the Grange became a part of Lewis County in 1833. I'm starting to get good at identifying the feeling, the gut feeling that some places have to just, they're places that you kind of want to leave. And, and what I mean by that is like, if you grew up here, you know, let's just, I'm not putting down LaGrange, Missouri. I don't know anything about it, but some places just from a, a young person's perspective, you know, someone that's just just starting out their life and they looking for opportunities, you know, and making their way in the world, making their mark in the world. There's just some towns that just feel like you you would want to leave them as quick as you could. <laughs> just turn 18 and jump on a train or jump on a push barge or something, <laughs> make a raft, cut off the end of your pants and wade out in the water and push it off and see where you end up. Goodbye, LaGrange. Well, 
one of the best things about being a shanty boat captain, you can just push off, keep heading down the river. <laughs> you don't like where you are? Shove off, keep going down the river. <laughs> you can float it. I, I've turned the motor off and I, I was doing almost two miles an hour just floating. The boat turns sideways, but floating down the river. Mark Twain was a genius. He tapped into something so primordial, so base. Everybody, at least sometimes in their life, just wants to slip away. I try to show you every night's anchorage if I can give you my little assessment on it so we kind of had an odd day today because we were stuck on the on the beach there for half of it so we didn't make it very far those lights right there that is La lagrange missouri and this is kind of we ran out of daylight obviously and so what we did is we got off the channel and we came up here and threw anchor in about three feet of water it's really calm. Now my chart plotter has lost the details because I don't have the chip more than likely. So I don't know where the wing dams are at, but what I do is I go really slow and I kick the motor up and I just watch. There's a, there is a setting where I can, it'll show what's coming ahead if you go real slow. So if it starts coming up to like one foot or something, I assume there might be a wing dam there. So that's what I've been doing. It's not a perfect, it's not perfect, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll just show you. Kind of a pretty evening. Temperature is about 50. Good morning, guys and gals. So we are beating into the wind today, which is always a bit of a bummer. It's shaving off about a mile per hour at the 2,000 RPM-ish place that I like to keep the motor you can see it often doesn't come across on camera very well but we've got you know we're beating into the wind we've probably got I don't know two footers or something not a big deal but it just makes for even slower going and burning a little more gas but like I always say some people have real problems stay tuned I'm just sitting here tooling along beating into the wind and I every once in a while it's like a habit I look in the back window just to see if anything sneaking up on us and let me show you what I saw. So we're getting off the channel right now to let these guys pass. That's a triple. That's three wide. We'll let that, let that bad boy pass us and we'll get back on the channel. Wouldn't want to be rear-ended by that. Now we're just going to circle around and fall in behind them. We are coming into the town of Quincy. I believe Quincy's on the Illinois side. Almost certain. We're going to try for another Beagle Beach break over here. All sorts of nice beaches over here. Just, just inside the Quincy city limits. Taking a little brat for a walk here. Come up to this tree. Help us. <laughs> oh, I think we're a little late, guys. Sorry. I'm trying really hard not to get into a rush uh, to get, you know. I want to be less destination oriented uh, and just more the journey is the reward. You know, that's always a goal. But that has to be tempered with moving on and, you know, you can't stop for everything. So we're going to pick and choose. Instead of Quincy here, we're going to stop at Hannibal. Excuse me. And uh, 
and we're gonna we're gonna try to stay the night. We're gonna find a place, maybe a dock or something. Stay the night and really go look around the town and and take in some of the the Mark Twain stuff. So I hope that works out. We will find out. Stay tuned. Good morning, Lock and Dam 21. Uh, this is a pleasure craft heading south. I was hoping I could pass through the chamber this afternoon. Uh, yes, sir, I can see. I'm probably like less than a mile away. All right, just give me a minute and I'll get uh, over. Great, thank you. Okay, guys, I just ready to radio the Lockmaster. This is Lock and Dam 21. They're going to have me float this one. Closing up behind us. So I've been picking up pieces of driftwood here to, uh, as push poles. I keep this one in the back, and when I'm in the, the locks here, I just go from back to front and just kind of push off the walls to keep the boat from hitting them. So, you know, these are free. You find them all over the place. <laughs> it's like Gandalf's staff. Now they're opening up for us. Try to stay out of your way so you can see it. Hopefully you guys can see that. Finally coming into Hannibal, Missouri. The home of Mark Twain. Imagine the storms and deposit those. This just feels like the way to visit Hannibal, Missouri. It's by water. Okay, we're just drifting in about two feet of water. We're gonna try to drift over to that little beach over there. And there's the marina. I hear it's like 30 bucks a night, so. We're gonna just try to park over here. Why not? Okay, here's our spot, guys. This is Hannibal, Missouri. East Hannibal, across the bridge. And we kind of bypass the little downtown and the river boat and all that. There's a marina just right behind me here. And then there's like this little little park and there's a creek, it's called Bear Creek. I could have pulled into Bear Creek, it's just deep enough, but there really wasn't a better spot than this. I mean, I am kind of, you know, when barges go by, it might cause some wake or something, but I, let me turn the phone around. So I built up a little log dam here. <laughs> We got two lines going to this big log with all sorts of other ones. I'm just being overcautious again. Then I have my really long line going to that tree. So I guess I'd feel good enough leaving her here when I go to town. We're gonna hang out for a while and just make sure. Let a couple barges go by. This is like our front yard tonight. What a sweet spot. Okay, we're going to find out what the wake from a barge is and see how much the boat moves. Me being overly cautious again. Here we go. She's heading right now. What's she going to do? Nothing. All 
I already know there's going to be a lot of murals for us to check out. Hope you guys like them. Admiral Kuntz. Admiral Robert Kuntz was born in Hannibal in 1864. He joined the United States Navy in 1881 and served until 1928. He held commands of the 5th Naval District, the United States Fleet, the USS Georgia, and also Chief of Naval Operations. He was the Governor of Guam from 1912 to 1913. Kuntz fought in the Spanish-American War, Philippine-American War, and World War I. He is a recipient of the Navy Distinguished Service Medal. <laughs> Here we are on a Tuesday. You know, and a beautiful day. And I'm walking down the middle of the street. <laughs> Could I do this in, like, Venice, California, or, uh, well, Manhattan, or, you know, Boston, Massachusetts? No. I saw some murals in this back alley here. Let's go check them out. We spotted a church up at the top of this hill. Let's go check it out. As we get up here, I can see there's actually three of them we can look at. Which one are we gonna go to first? Let's go check that one out. You see what I mean about these towns just feeling so empty? It's amazing. Hannibal is a, you know, one of the famous American towns because of Mark Twain. And I know we're here, you know, not in tourist season. I mean, it's November, but I just feel like there would be more people here, you know? And I I think I've seen three or four other people walking around, walking their dogs. So, I don't know. Am I missing something? Like it? Well, I don't see why I oughtn't to like it. Does a boy get the chance to whitewash a fence every day? Tom Sawyer. <laughs> oh, I can see they've got these little placards around, quotes from the book, the books. Let's see what this one says. It's like a little Central Park. Looks like they might be able to have a little concerts over there. A cauliflower is nothing more than a cabbage with a college education. <laughs> Mark Twain. Suppose you were an idiot, and suppose you were a member of con Congress, but I repeat myself. <laughs> he was just so brutal to authority. I love it. He was such a rebel. He told it like it is, and was, and is. <clears throat> Tom, Tom, we're lost. We're lost. We never can get out of this awful place. Becky Thatcher. Beagle tours are like nothing else, guys. Remember, let us endeavor so to live that when we come to die, even the undertaker will be sorry. I get your point, Mark. Right is right and wrong is wrong, and a body ain't go, got no business when he ain't ignorant and knows better. Got that right. Huck Finn. I'm ashamed to say that I have not read any of those books I've kind of yeah you know referenced them here and there but I've never actually sat down and read them it's got to happen I got to start making time for that there's just so many good books and so little time it's good to see the town honoring more than just Mark Twain this fella is was named William Henry Hatch he was a farmer a statesman and a lawyer and Hannibal was the home of William H. Hatch, lawyer, congressman, and father of agricultural experiment stations. Hatch sponsored the law, creating the Office of Secretary of Agriculture. Adjoining Hannibal is the Hatch Farm, bequeathed to the state by his daughter and now operated as the Hatch Dairy Experiment Station. Interesting. This is an old movie theater that has now turned into a church. And yes, I'm standing out in the middle of the road to take this footage. In 
in my ever attempt to try to explain my fascination with things like buildings and lighthouses and stuff. You know, I went to Ireland a few years ago, and it was a great trip. Um, it was right before I started making videos, or I would have made some. And, you know, there was like castles in every town. It was, you know, that's the old world, you know, everything's old over there. And when you see some of the buildings, like I just showed you, those could easily, they're just as impressive, you know, as a 500 year old castle in Ireland or Scotland or England in some ways. Same size, just as big, sometimes bigger. And I'm sure just as much skill went into it and time and and uh, thought and design. So that's how I try to look at this stuff is it's, uh, you know, here in America, we're still relatively young in the whole scheme of things. And yet we've got equivalents to castles all over the country. We're seeing them all over Hannibal here now. Hannibal's that kind of town where you could just spend days walking the back streets and the back alleys. It just seems to go on and on forever. And when you get off the main drag, you just get into these old neighborhoods where there's like old factories, old houses. Some of them are old brick houses. It's just, uh, you know, people... <laughs> Here I am again trying to, you know, say the unsayable, you know, but it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a museum. We're living in an open air museum in a lot of ways. It's like stepping back in history. They don't build brick buildings like this anymore. They don't build factories anymore, really. I mean... I'm sure there's some exceptions and some industries, but by and large, we've just transformed into such a different kind of society. And so when you come into a town where the infrastructure is still there from a different era, from an era that came before now, at least to me, it just, it's, it's powerful. It's interesting to think that what was what was driving that society you know there was more of a permanence i can i can that's one thing i've kind of concluded you know buildings were meant to last longer than one lifetime you could argue now that there's some building developments that the, the houses are built just to last long enough to sell them you know and five years later they start to fall apart and the roof leaks and you know, the foundation cracks or whatever, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, a builder or so, but I, it's, I've known builders, you know, and so, <clears throat> whereas when you see a lot of, when you see these old, old downtowns here, they were building stuff with the anticipation that it was going to be there for a hundred or a thousand years. And what, and the, the consciousness, the mentality behind that is what's interesting to me that there were people thinking like that and what happened and why don't we design our environment as humans, as Americans like that anymore. If that question makes sense to you and you have some thoughts on it, I would love to hear them, you know, comment below, please.